the 2004 National Professional Paintball League Super 7 World Series kicked off next to the pier in Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. Okay, The tournament was maxed out with 160 of the best teams from the U.S. and Europe, a standard that would be followed at every MPPL event during the year. Friday and Saturday's prelim play was intense, as every team wanted to make a statement and earn respect as the 2004 title hunt began. In the Pro Division, Dynasty picked up where they left off last year in Miami, eliminating the Naughty Dogs to make the finals. The other side of the draw saw a retooled Avalanche team beat the newly formed Team Arsenal. Avalanche and Dynasty made for an interesting matchup for the first Pro Final for 2004. Game one saw an even breakout and then a 1-for-1 one -one penalty came into effect as Danny Tiljack was pulled after Pepe Scudia played on. The highlight was Brian Cole's stealthy move up the snake and elimination of Glenn Takamoto. After that, Dynasty wrapped up game one. Game two was Dynasty's domination. Avalanche was destroyed by Dynasty's aggressive gameplay. Led by Alex Frage, Oliver Lang, and Yo Shrao, Avalanche had no answer for the speed and firepower they were facing. So Dynasty defended their Huntington Beach title from 03 and began their campaign to capture another Super 7 World Series overall title in 04. Our second stop of the year took place in Tampa, Florida at the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Raymond James Stadium. From the very beginning of the event, the main topic of conversation was the attendance of the NXL powerhouse, Infamous. They made the finals and came up against Dynasty, who had beaten Sedition in the other semi. Game one saw a fast-paced attack by Infamous as they gobbled up real estate, leaving Dynasty on the defensive and ultimately with the loss. The second final was even more brutal as Infamous dominated the field, pinning down Dynasty and knocking out Oliver Lang before he could do any damage. Lasoya closed out the final with a run through that electrified the huge crowd. Dynasty had been beat. This win by Infamous would be Dynasty's first NPPL loss in two seasons, and the impetus for bringing several more world-class teams to the NPPL competition. Denver, Colorado's Invesco Field at Mile High hosted event number three of the 2004 NPPL Super 7 World Series. With the scenic skyline as a backdrop, the best paintball players in the world came to play. In Denver, Infamous struggled, but played well when they had to, defeating Avalanche in the semis. In the other semi, Excessive regulated Dynasty to the Constellation Final for the first time in seven MPPL events. 
So Denver's final matched Infamous with Excessive, the most dominant team of the weekend. It was a knockdown, drag out fight, and it took three games for Infamous to shut down the powerful Excessive team. An interesting weekend where Infamous squeaked into the quarters and then gained momentum to finish on top. Infamous continued to climb the overall rankings. Despite missing Huntington, they were in fifth after competing in just two tournaments. The NPPL returned to Las Vegas' Sam Boyd Stadium for event number four. The nightlife and the great competition made it a stop to remember. Semi-1 was a rematch between our Denver finalists, Excessive and Infamous. Excessive lost in the Mile High City, but got some payback with a three-game victory. In Semi-2, Dynasty eliminated their newly formed sister team, Entourage. So it was Excessive and Dynasty in the finals. Dynasty had something to prove after a third-place finish in Denver. They smoked Excessive in Game 1 in less than a minute, and while Game 2 was more of a chess match, Dynasty would not be denied the Vegas win. They won 15 games without a single loss, and in doing so, won the tournament and clinched the 2004 Super 7 Series overall title for the second year in a row. Now for the fifth and final event of the year. The best pro and amateur teams have come to San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium to participate in the most prestigious event in paintball, the Commander's Cup. 175 teams will battle for valuable overall points and bragging rights as division titles are decided. This is the NPPL Super 7 World Series. Welcome to San Diego, California, just outside of Qualcomm Stadium for the National Professional Paintball League Super 7 World Series stop number five, the Commander's Cup. Hi everybody, I'm Artie Edmonds alongside world champion Rocky Cagnoni. Now Rocky, paintball has become the fastest growing sport in the world. It's getting huge. For this event, we had to lengthen the schedule, bring out lights, all this to accommodate all the new teams. Over 175 teams showed up, 30 of them which were pro. Well, I'll tell you, talking about pro teams, Dynasty, with their win in Las Vegas, locked up the 2004 championship. Nobody else can touch them. No one can touch them. They have first. Big props to Dynasty, back-to-back -back world champions. But we have a lot of teams fighting for second place. Excessive, Arsenal, Avalanche, Infamous, all vying for that second place title. But it's a tight, close race. We'll see what happens. And the points will determine who will be in the pro ranks in 2005. The top 17 teams from 2004 and the winner of Division I will make up 18 pro teams in 2005. Those teams are the cream of the crop. The best of the best, Rocky. Now, there's a lot more than paintball going on here in San Diego, and here to tell us about it is Tony Johnson. Tony, what's up? Thanks, Artie. Our venue here at Qualcomm Stadium is awesome. This is our first time in San Diego, and we're doing it up big. We've got over 75 vendors and a Rock Me Moto stage sponsored by Motorola and Billboard featuring tons of live acts. We'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, let's go to the prelims. Two factors had the pros talking during the prelims. The first was the venue, sunny San Diego, California. I don't know, I just get the chills thinking about it, you know? San Diego paintball and playing at you know, Qualcomm Stadium. I mean, I used to watch the Padres and the Chargers here growing up and went to college down the street and lived over there. So it's, I mean, I, I hope it stays here forever. I hope we have this tournament every year here. The second, the 18-team cap on the pro division for 2005. Well, you know, I honestly think I think that's a really good thing for the sport, you know, because it, it kind of it institutes a sort of like hierarchy. You know, it's like these guys they earned it. I, I think for all of us pros, it's going to be great. Um, it's it's not going to be as easy. Now anyone can enter as pro, and I think you should deserve your spot as a pro, which I think is awesome. In essence, that's what this event was all about in the pro division, and several teams were on the bubble. 
entourage, the second dynasty squad was in the running, but an illegal marker would result in their disqualification on the second day of competition. No points for the event and no place in the 2005 Pro Division. Tauntaun Flingers and Nexus were both vying for that coveted 17th position. Tauntauns unfortunately experienced bad luck and would eventually finish the season in 20. Nexus, however, was leaving little to luck, hiring a squad of Russian Legion players to ensure their spot for next year. There's two Nexus players, me and Tom Pemberton, and the uh, Russian Legion. Uh, they're sort of helping us out just to secure next year. We were in, we were, in, we were 17 at, currently, but other, other teams were throwing other players in, so we had to do what we had to do, really. As expected, the beefed-up Nexus team would easily move on to the quarterfinals as one of seven teams to only suffer one loss during the two days of prelim competition. Here's our prelim results, Rocky. Uh, anything interesting? Definitely famous with a score of 695 out of the possible 700, and also the men, 688 out of 700. Both these teams came out of nowhere, played awesome in the prelims. Rocky, in Division I, the edge came out on top. Uh, what do you think about that? Edge, that's normal. I was surprised to see Justice in the seventh spot. I figured they'd be in the top three. Fusion, where they are. Texas Storm, where they are. But definitely Justice should have been up there in the top three. And Division Two, run it down, Rocky. Nothing new here. Mox Nick's always taking the top spot. Uh, Bone Break Factory should have been up there, maybe in the top four. ACI Splatter Factory, they look right. Everything looks good on paper. And finally, Division Three. What do you think here, Rocky? Division Three, Organized Chaos. They're usually in the top four. Paintball Mark usually takes the top two spots. LTZ, they look perfect right where they're sitting. At each and every Super 7 event, you'll find the world's largest paintball expo and trade show, featuring paintball's top manufacturers and the latest in high-tech equipment. I've never seen nothing like this before. It's, it's huge. Along with new and emerging companies, you'll find the big boys, like Kingman, and you might even run into one of your favorite pro players. Hi, my name is Tom Cole. I'm captain of a professional team Bad Company. We are one of Kingman and Raven's factory teams, and I'm here to show you some of our new products. This is the Raven Primal. This is the first gun from Kingman with an eye. It also has an, a Delrin bolt and a regulator. The Raven Primal also has a 20 shot per second board, which is new to Kingman, and it also works at 100 PSI operating pressure, which is one of the lowest guns out there. For 2005, we've upgraded the Phoenix from 2004. We've added two ball detents, so you can use them with your halos a little more efficiently. We've also added the anti-chop bolt, which is a really amazing improvement. Even without the eyes, it stops ball breakers almost to nothing. Also in 2005, Bad Company is going to be shooting the new Spider Phoenix with the hinge trigger. The gun shoots really, really fast, which is going to put it competitive with all the other high-end guns on the market. This, with many other products, you need basically everything you need to play paintball sold by Kingman. And next year, look forward to us to release a new BC limited edition line of tournament level products. That's it. I hate talking. Six team pro teams would meet in the quarterfinals, making the draw crucial. Determined by their seating in the prelims, the 16 teams are placed in four groups where they all play three games one against each team in their group. The scores from each game are tallied, and the four teams with the highest three game totals move on to the semifinals. The way the brackets are, it's like Survivor Series. You gotta, you gotta win your bracket. For this one, there's 16 teams, so you have three, four teams in each division. You gotta win all three games. It's one of the top goes. It's two or die. It's, honestly, like, it's how you play in these three games. It's pretty much how you do in the tournament. It just so happened that in San Diego, one team from each group would emerge undefeated. In group one, it was the Ironmen, winning games against Avalanche, NXC, and Rage. Group two, the most difficult group by far, was won by Excessive, who not only drew and beat Dynasty in their first game, but sent the newly crowned NPPL Super 7 champions packing. 
tough game. Dynasty District ranked number one this year. We're ranked number two, so we knew it was going to be a battle. Uh, the field is set up so that the battle really goes down the snake. Whoever controls the snake is going to win the game. We fled a lot of bodies in there. They fled a lot of bodies in there. And in the end, we had two guys left. We had one guy in the snake and one guy in the corner. And that was enough. But they got a little desperate at the end of the game and tried to you know, make something happen, but they didn't have enough bodies to really make it work. And we, we had control of the snake well enough that we just sort of sealed it off. It was a well-fought game, though. It could have gone either way. It just... That's the way it bounces sometimes. You know, we were shooting with our right hand in the snake, and we had a little bit of every game plan. I think we controlled down the, the line of the snake better, and it's, that was the difference. They would go on to win two more tough games: one against the Naughty Dogs, and the other against Bob Long's Ironman. Group 3 was dominated by the Ringers as the Nexus-clad Russians rolled over Famous, Eclipse Factory, and knocked out the winners of two Super 7 events this year, Infamous. Well, Group 4 was interesting in that no one was expecting the men to come out on top. Arsenal had been in the top three of the Super 7 for most of the year and even won an event in Europe. The Tauntaun Acid Team, while not doing great this season, was still an established organization. And Sedition made itself known early on this year with some outstanding performances. But the men? Well, fluke or not, they would go on undefeated in their group to enter the semifinals as the number one seed. Here are the quarterfinal standings, and Rocky, probably the biggest two surprises had to be Dynasty and Infamous not in the final. That's one of the reasons that the MPPL is capping the pro field for the 2005 season. With only 18 teams, that means that only eight teams will meet in the quarters where they'll play nine games each. That way the luck factor will be eliminated and a single loss will not be the end all for a team that might have otherwise deserved to make the semis. If you've ever played paintball, you know the name Tipman. More than likely it was or will be the first marker you'll use if you happen to rent equipment at a local field. And there's a reason for that. Solid design and durability make a Tipman marker outlive the competition by leaps and bounds. If you've been fortunate enough to attend a Super 7 event this year, you've been able to see Tipman's reliability and speed in the hands of factory team Tipman Effect. Tipman's history. Well, it all started back in 1986 with uh, Denny Tipman Sr. I uh, came out with the SMG 60, and uh, that was the first gun they, paintball gun they actually produced, which was uh, full auto. So it was pretty revolutionary for the times, considering the only other guns on the market was pump guns. And then it's just moved on from there through all the uh, later models, up to the current ones with the Model 98 and the 85. Uh, the great thing about Tippmann's, uh, we concentrate on two guns, the Model 98 and the uh, A5. Um, but that really helps with our dealer base. It's easy for them to maintain the guns, sell the guns. Um, if someone has a problem with them, they understand how to work on them. It really is a great product. The special features of an A5 is uh, the uh, Cyclone feed system. It'll feed pain as fast as you can pull the trigger. So you, there's no need for electronic hoppers. You just plug, plug it in and go. Pure Promotions presents the NPPL Super 7 World Series in association with WDP, makers of the Angel, the most advanced paintball marker in the world, and Kingman. When you are fearless, when you are powerful, you are unstoppable. Kingman, unstoppable, and 
Tippin Pneumatics Incorporated, building high-performance paintball markers and accessories since 1986. Tippin, made in the USA. By Motorola, makers of the M500 and M25 digital audio players. And by Paintball Games International, the paintball magazine of choice for paintball professionals. At this stop, the Expo's been rocking day and night thanks to the addition of the Rock Me Moto stage and Motorola's Rock Me Moto MP3 player. I mean, music is the driving, you know, emotional thing behind everything. So music really gets the players going, keeps them psyched, gets them focused. Well, Billboard and Motorola got together to uh, launch their new line of uh, MP3 players in a celebration nationwide tour. We're gonna get together and do six cities, Philadelphia, San Diego, Las Vegas, New York, Los Angeles, and Minneapolis. Most of the bands are independent artists uh, looking to find their way in the industry, get launched, and Moto Music and Billboard are doing just that for them. This tour, we just didn't want to dedicate to established artists. We wanted to help out artists that are emerging, and we brought them along on the tour. Rock Me Moto America. We're coming, and the Motorola player is second to none. It's incredible. Very easy to use, preloaded with music, long battery life, everything you need in, in a player. Time now to go down on the grass. Our championship field here in San Diego has been called by many our best layout of the season. A low, open midfield combined with this fast-playing artificial turf has already helped create some exciting gameplay this weekend. Rocky will now show us some of the keys to winning on this field. Board position is going to be this taco right here. People are going to be running in, sliding in, get in. They're going to be shooting across the field. They're going to try to get their mirror in over here. And as soon as they get that, they're going into the snake. Same shot. They're going to be shooting the big brick and the taco. And then they're getting in. Once they get here, they got shots on the big brick, taco, and the stand up in the back corner. All right, the mid guys, the Super 7 MPABL field's kind of open in the middle, so these mid guys, they're going to have to really work, they're going to have to run in, slide real, real early, and what they do is, all they got to do is make sure that no one's going to make the snake side, all right? That's all their job is right here, working this brick. Once they secure that side, then they work to the inside right here, and shoot at the big pillow right there. The bad guys, what they're going to do off the break, they're going to shoot, they're going to lay in their guns, they're going to come up, and they're going to shoot them here. And then they're going to shoot inside, they're going to shoot the taco, and maybe the other stand up. We've been down on the grass, Rod Cagnone. We've been doing this all year. Hope you learned something. Peace out. Time now for highlights from the semifinals. Semi 1 featured Nexus, a team from England receiving a lot of help this weekend from members of the Russian Legion squad. Their opponent, the Iron Men. They joined the NPPL in Denver, and here in San Diego, they're making their first appearance in the semi. Game one saw Nexus mow down the shock Ironman in just over one minute. The Ironman were shot out of their primary positions as Nexus controlled the lanes. The game was closed out by Mihail Niazam after he made his way up the snake and bunkered Chris Doss. On to game two of the best of three series where the Ironmen played with more focus. Nexus lost a key player in Konstantin Fedorov early on, but they came very close to closing out the match anyways. Niazev once again penetrated deep into the Ironman zone, this time on the crowd side. His run through could have put them in the final, but John Marquez anticipated the attack and shut him down. Middle back man Peter Vasiliev was the last Nexus player to go to the dead box. So game two to the Ironman. No doubt both these teams wanted to be in the finals of the Commander's Cup. Each team lost a player on the breakout in Game 3. But as the match wore on, the Ironmen were able to advance to their secondary positions and eliminate the Nexus gunmen. The move of the matchup had to go to Riley Sullivan, who closed out the game with a run-up the tape. We uh, lost a few guys off the break, but we've outplayed them in our bunkers. Uh, really tough game. They were at both 50s, the Snake and the left 40. Um, we just shot them out of our bunkers. We've been really practicing on uh, our snapshot and just uh, working hard to win this tournament. 
The other semifinal pitted excessive, a team due for an NPPL tournament win after a third place and three second place results this season. They've got the seven man game wired and their victims know it. Unfortunately, their opponents were the men, a group of players with only one NPPL tournament under their belt and little respect for anyone they come up against. The highlight of game one was the action around the state. Excessive Nikki Cuba got in first, shot out Zizek Barrow, then got bunkered by the men's Ryan Williams. Timely moves like that helped the men take game one. In game two, Excessive showed by their rank number two overall in the MPPL. A dominant win with five men left alive. Micah McLaughlin explained how. Uh, it's a tough game. This, this field's pretty rough because uh, there's lots of little bunkers that block off a lot of shots. So it's hard to find the bodies and it's hard to really zone up. So we ended up just going at them a little bit more aggressively and we're able to, to, to pull out the win. It was a tough game, but we just kept up the intensity and kept going forward. That was the difference. Another three game semi, the winner to face the Ironmen in the final. A well played game by both teams, but a move by Mike Paxson late in the game from center back to Snake where he shut down Jesse Lappin may have been the decider on this one. A run through by Pete Uchik and a final elimination by Billy Wing closed the deal. A spot in the final of an MPPL tournament is a huge accomplishment. It's a very unique feeling that we haven't had in two years that we're actually yeah, going to get paid. Yeah, yeah. Paid a lot of money <laughs> now. All in. All in. All in. All in blind. All in. All in. All in. All in. All in. Blind. Signature move. All in. All in. All in. For the last 11 years, Eclipse has been uh, one of the custom houses. Basically, we take other manufacturers' markers um, and Eclipse them, customize them to our specifications, and then release them onto the market. And now it's reached the point where we're at a, a stage, not only in terms of where the market's at, but the size of Eclipse, where we can start to produce our own marker. Uh, and this is, this is what we've come up with, the Eclipse Ego. The Ego is a, an open bolt, uh, high-end electro-pneumatic marker. It comes complete with shaft solo barrel, 14 inch 693 bore, uh, Eclipse Oops, which is an on-off purge system. You turn it on and off with this knob at the front. Eclipse inline reg, it comes complete with Samurai 3 trigger, an LCD screen at the back, push buttons, easy access, Ego rubber grips, uh, brake beam sensor system, the BBSS, uh, it also comes with a DEFTEC feed tube, slightly offset to one side, um, so the balls can't bounce back up. They just roll straight into the breech. Uh, internal LPR, one-piece ram assembly, QEVs, the list is pretty much endless. We've used everything that we've put into practice over the last 11 years and kind of put it all into one package, which you now see here. Promotions presents the NPPL Super 7 World Series in association with WDP, makers of the Angel, the most advanced paintball marker in the world, and Kingman, when you are fearless, when you are powerful, you are unstoppable. Kingman, unstoppable. And Tipman Pneumatics Incorporated, building high-performance paintball markers and accessories since 1986. Tipman, made in the USA by Motorola, makers of the M500 and M25 digital audio players. And by Paintball Games International, the paintball magazine of choice for paintball professionals. The final for Division 3 matched up NPPL regular Stormfront against the newcomer to the Super 7 World Series, NTK Factory. With the Division III overall title decided, these two teams were looking to win some prizes and the respect given to those who win at an NPPL event. Stormfront's roster included Josh Yost, Todd Shivers, Johnny Diedrich, Bob DeVillers, Jesse and Dan Fendrick, and Mark Hollers. For NTK, Ryan Jasper, Jake Shriek, Shane Childers, Andrew Yunt, Stefan Delgado, Kelly Lewis and JT Stevens took the field. I'm not giving in, not giving in, so let me in. Game one went to Stormfront. MTK left too many lanes open, and Stormfront easily advanced to their secondary positions. 
where they picked off MTK boys one by one. Game two, NTK put up a fight. Each team traded losses for eliminations until it came down to a two on one. Stormfront's backman, Bob DeVillers, and frontman Jesse Fendrick worked together to shut down a hard to kill JT Stevens to take the game, match, and Commander's Cup title in San Diego. I'm standing here with Bob from Stormfront of Division Three. Just came off a win on the last game. Tell me about that game. That was a good game. You know, they, they put up a good game. We had it was a two-on-one left. And he was on the right side. He came out. He shot at me. Put me down. I saw the right guy left. He was battling with him. I popped up. He made a move. Just good timing. So, uh, how's it feel to play the Commanders Cup Finals? Uh, all these MVP events are awesome. You know, they really took paintball to the next level, which is what it needed. And, and as you know, Camille and Chuck did, you can see all around you. This is the best, best there ever was. Great, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a look at the top four teams and final overall standings for Division Three. Congratulations to Just Paintball on a fantastic season. Time now for highlights from Division Two. Both United and Deadbox Factory had to endure semi-final matches that went to three games to qualify for the Commander's Cup Final. United has competed in every stateside MPPL event this year, and they're ranked number four in the overall standings. Their roster includes Sterling Glines, Corey Hale, Lauren Jean, Will Moore, Lee Miller, Mike Lanauer, and Eric Pevitt. On the other side of the field, Deadbox Factory was playing their very first NPPL tournament of the season. Their roster included Billy Bernalcia, Ryan St. Cyr, Tristan Moscato, Rico Gigliotti, Ryan McFadden, Chris Costigan, and Mikey Preet. Game one of the best of three finals saw Deadbox move Ryan St. Cyr on the breakout. However, they would regroup and take out four United players before losing control of the match. Arm block, Billy! Billy, arm block! Turn arm block, Billy! Get down! Billy Bernachia's last ditch effort move up the snake was shut down by a diving Sterling Fine. Game one to United. Unfazed by the loss, Deadbox Factory came out swinging in game two. Great shooting, unified movement, along with a final run through by Billy Bernachia, added to a perfect 100 point win. Having all seven players alive in the final game is a rare occurrence, and Deadbox celebrated a decisive victory. No one expected us to do this. We never practiced together, nothing. We're in first and second place. No way. No matter what, we're a winner. We gotta win this game. If we win this game, fall. Last Jeez. A third game was necessary to decide who would be Division II Commander's Cup champion, and it was a good one. After trading bodies early on, United began to press up the middle. Run-throughs were answered by run-throughs until both teams had one man standing. United's Sterling Lines was in the snake, but Deadbox Factory's Tristan Moscato would be the hero of the day. We 
had to walk down the lanes. They started running through. They ran through sloppy. They didn't close the game right. We cut them out. We cut them down. down. Came down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Guy, guy in the snake. I was going, going insane. You can't beat the CC crew. Clean up crew right here. You can't beat that. Brand new team. Brand new team right here. Dead box. Yeah, thanks. Dead back. Thanks to Dead Box. We owe it all to Dead Box. Everything. Congratulations to Dead Box Factory for a huge win in San Diego. A win, two seconds, and a third marked a consistent season for Box Knicks, and the result was their Division II NPPL overall title.
The Division I final was highly anticipated by the thousands in attendance at Qualcomm Stadium. The story was an underdog team called Regime that was playing in their first MPPL tournament of the season. They had dispatched the MPPL's third ranked Division I team, Justice, in the semifinals in three games. Everyone wondered if they could take the tournament title. Their roster included a guest star, Maximus Lundquist of the Pro Team Joy Division. He joined Shane Howe, Jeremy Labano, Josh Sells, Ryan Podesta, Tyson Hill, and Garrett Scott to produce some impressive wins over the weekend. Their opponents were Texas Storm, the NPPL's second-ranked team with wins in Denver and Malaga this season. Their roster included Colt Roberts, Adrian Cortinas, Stephen Hicks, Mark Driggers, Ryan Gray, Waylon Hancock, and Nick Walker. Game one saw strong breakouts by both teams. Then Regime's Josh Sells made a move that caught the Texans by surprise. He bumped up from his back middle position to the center front taco to shut down Colt Roberts' penetration into the red zone. Waylon Hancock and Mark Driggers quickly joined him in the dead box. Regime continued to advance and penetrate into the red zone, eliminating players one by one. Until Josh Sells ended the match with his bunker of Texas Storm's Ryan Gray. Game one to Regime. In game two, Texas Storm lost Colt Roberts as he tried to go deep on the breakout. The teams remained in their bunkers for a few minutes, throwing tons of paint. Until Adrian Cortinas made a move up the middle. Regime's Ryan Podesta was ready for him and nailed him from the big brick across the field. Both teams lost players along the crowd side tape. And finally, Texas Storm's Mark Driggers was all alone behind the small brick. He hung on, taking out one more Regime player, but Garrett Scott finished him off and grabbed the flag. Regime, two and done. The underdogs with an upset and a Commander's Cup title in Division I. Well, we bumped up from Novice uh, at the end of this year. We played uh, X-Ball at the PSP, and then we moved over to the seven-man tryout at the end of the year. We played second last year in Novice. We've been training really hard this year and placed first in the AM Division fairly convincingly. So it was a pretty emotional win for you guys. Uh, tell me about it. It's a big emotional win. You know, all the guys here have heart. Uh, we picked up Max to just play with us as a guest. Uh, he's a great guy. You know, we, a lot of us hadn't met, meet him, met him since uh, we got here. And uh, he's, he's a real great guy. Uh, give a lot of props to Max, and thanks for helping us out. And uh, give props to everybody on Regime. We came, we saw, we took first home. Here's a look at the final standings in San Diego. In the overall, Evil takes the 2004 NPPL Championship by virtue of wins in Tampa and Toulouse along with three other top 10 results. The title also earns them a rank advancement and one of the coveted spots in next season's 18 pro team division. System X is, is really starting to come on strong. I mean, we took some time when we came on at the beginning of the year and looked at 04 and said, hey, what are our goals? Our goals are we need to, we need to have it all. We need to be able to make a good quality competitive marker, a low end marker for the walk-on players. We have a full line of gear, all the protective gear and performance wear that people want to wear. We're trying to do something to fit all the needs. You know, in regards to the tournament play, we, we've got competitive markers, competitive gear, and really, really good competitive paint. On the walk-on play, people want not too expensive paintball, but it's something that shoots straight and doesn't break in their guns. That's another thing that we offer. On the scenario play, we're coming out with a new, two new items that we're working on right now, specifically is our glow-in-the-dark paint. Something new to paintball that a lot of people haven't really done. A lot of people pointed here and there, but you'll soon see scenario games will be kind of co-imparted with glow-in-the-dark paintballs. This is a new System X enemy marker. The most important features of this gun are the fact that it's got WAS, board, and electronics. It's got uh, brake beam eyes. We have dual injection grips, so you got sticky, low-pressure LPR. It's got a 360-degree movable regulator, so if you don't know where it's going to mount, you don't have to worry about that anymore because your macro line will feel right on. System X on-off. Two-piece barrel kit right out of the box. 
Adjustable feed clamp, short and bolt. One of the neatest things about this gun when Wicked Air Sports helped us engineer this gun is the fact that it's got a shorter stroke than typical guns of the, of the open type bolt. Literally, this gun will shoot as fast as your loader can feed it. Some people claim 35, 40 balls a second. Well, we'll see. This is the gun that'll keep up with it. Pure Promotions presents the NPPL Super 7 World Series in association with WDP, makers of the Angel, the most advanced paintball marker in the world, and Kingman. When you are fearless, when you are powerful, you are unstoppable. Kingman, unstoppable. And Tipman Pneumatics Incorporated, building high-performance paintball markers and accessories since 1986. Tipman, made in the USA by Motorola, makers of the M500 and M25 digital audio players. And by Paintball Games International, the paintball magazine of choice for paintball professionals. It's time now for the pro final and for more, let's go to Tony Johnson. Thanks guys. A lot of these fans came out to see hometown teams Dynasty and Excessive. As you know, they've been knocked out, but we still have two of the top teams in paintball competing for first place. That's Ironman and the men. These fans aren't going anywhere. We have world-class paintball here at the Commander's Cup. Let's go to the finals. Thanks, Tony. Iron Men will be breaking out of the left end of the field. They qualified second from the quarters and came back from a first game loss in the semis versus Nexus and won two in a row to make the final. Guys to watch, John Marquez, Zach Long, Ron Nelson, been playing for years, a lot of experience. At the right end of the field are the men, the number one team from the quarters and victors over the super tough excessive squad. Oh, I like this lineup. Mr. U, Pete Uchig, Kevin Arcilla, and definitely Mike Paxson. Well, now we're ready for our best of three game pro final with $20,000 going to the winning team using the NPPL Super 7 100 point maximum elimination scoring system. And both teams playing in black uniforms, the men on the right hand side of your screen, the Iron Men from the left. Let's see how this breakout goes down, Rocky. And the game is on. Ooh, a lot of slides. Oh, Kevin Arcelia gets taken out from the men. And the Iron Men lose Zach Long at the same time. That's one of their back players. That could be big. That could hurt him later on. That's a cover guy down. Won't be able to support those front guys to make moves. Six on six. Oh, there's Mr. Yu running gun and slides out to the big brick. Now he can shoot inside at those back stand-ups. He's wrapping it in. Oh! Wow, he does shoot Ron Nelson. Looks like he gets taken out in the process, though, by Riley Sullivan, Ron's teammate. Five on five. And here comes Riley Sullivan bumping up. The Ironmen now have a player in the red zone. Let's see if the men can counter it. Yep, Ryan Williams slides out. Taco snake side. And Josh Davey breaks from the middle back crowd side and gets caught by Billy Wing right in the head. Iron Men four, the men five. Billy Wing's playing that stand up pretty good. He knows he's got to lock down those lanes. And Riley Sullivan's in the red zone. He's still trying to keep the men out of that snake. He's trying to work it, but he's got Ryan Williams on the other side. And here comes Billy bumping up from the right back stand up to the taco. Now Billy's looking inside. He's looking for Riley. He's trying to find some prey. Oh, oh right in the head. Good shot by Billy Wing. Men five, Ironman three. This is where they're gonna start making the push right here. Ryan Williams makes it into the snake. You see him in the red zone at the 50. And that's a big move. Let's look at this move once again. Wing on Sullivan. Now Wing knows where Sullivan is, so he anticipates his, his move. Boom, he comes out, whacks him right in the head. Nice shot by Billy. You see Ryan just creeping, creeping up that snake. And Marquez and Dazi, it seems like Marquez knows that Williams is in the snake. He does. Oh, he sure did. He knew exactly where Ryan was going to pop out. And he nailed him. Let's take a look at that again, Rocky. See, you can see Mark. I mean, it's an awesome shot regardless, but he knows he's in the snake. Ryan pops out. John takes one good snapshot at him. That's it. That's all it takes. And here, here you see Zizek, man, talking about work in the, the middle of the field. Now, he's got two people to contend with. Got Dazi and Marquez. There's a little snap shoot cat and mouse action going on. Someone's gonna get it. 
Oh! oh! Did he ever? Tazi! Cycloptic optic. Good shot by Zizek. Now Marquez under all kinds of pressure right here. Bam! And he takes it. We got Mike Paxson in the snake. That's a back guy in the snake, throwing down, cutting down legs. Adamson rolls up. You know, it didn't matter. Billy Wing was coming down the tank. Talk about a pinch. And that's going to do game one of our best of three. Going to the men, left with two men standing. Pretty close game. Rocky, run it down for us. What do you think? Game, smart game, start to finish. You know, key play, Billy Wing's bumping up the taco, taking out Sullivan from the red zone. Huge. Zizek, man, giving Dazi and Marquez all they can handle, you know. Uh, great shots for Billy from across the field. Plays like that made that first game. Well, the consolation final decided third and fourth. It was a power match between Excessive and Nexus, a team heavily bolstered by members of the Russian Legion team. Two games decided the ranking, and Nexus will be on the podium in third overall. Time now for game number two of our best of three final. The men have been playing with the poker mantra all in, all weekend long. It's even scribbled on their jerseys. If they can force Iron Men to fold one more time, the winner's pot of $20,000 will be theirs. And the Iron Men in a must-win situation will be battling their way from the right-hand side of your screen, the men from the left. Let's see how they do on the break out here, Rocky. The game is on. One, two, oh. Iron Men lose two, three. Three off the break. So not a great breakout for the Iron Men. Absolutely not. Seven on four, favor of the men. They're going to move up the field really fast now. I mean, they're down. Look at it. They got four people 10 yards from the red zone. Communicating that they look good. They're commanding the field, and Ron Nelson gets picked off from the center back stand up. Oh man, that, this is it, man. Seven on three, favor of the men. There's Zach Long trying to hold it down, but no way. Seven on two, the men. Here we go, here goes the frenzy. That leaves the whole right half of the field wide open. Dazi just shot Ryan Williams out of the taco, but it doesn't matter. What is it, six on two? Mr. Yu moves up to Big Breck. He's in Ironman territory now. He's going to rack, shoot inside. John Marquez, he's, gonna, he's trying to hold it down. Checks his arm, see if he's got a bounce. It's Marquez and Dazi. Those are the only two left here. They're on the same side of the field. And anything can happen. I mean, they're down, but they're not out yet, Rocky. Uh, now there's Mr. Yu. You can see him. It looks like he's, he wants to go. He's making the wraparound. Oh, who's this? This is Billy Wink moving his way through. Oh! Bunkers Dazi somehow stays on his feet. Now they're working on Marquez. He's the last guy live. That's it. That's it. $20,000. For the second match in a row, Billy Wink grabs the flag. You know what's awesome? The men, they're composed of actually three teams from the West Coast, from the Midwest, and the East Coast. I mean, they just came out here, they had fun, and they dominated all weekend. And they got it done for sure. Here's the breakout. This is the downfall of the Ironman. You cannot lose three guys on the breakout. Not in the Pro Division. It's not happening. Zach Long, man, trying to hold it down, but he's taking it. Ironman obviously downtrodden at this point. They can't be too upset. They got walked away with 10,000. The men, 20,000. Texas, five. Excessive, 2,500. There's the men, all smiles, man. Had fun. Ripped it up. Congratulations. Well, this tournament also wraps up the season's overall rankings, which qualifies the top 17 pro teams plus the top Division I team to play in the limited professional field in 2005. And congratulations to Evil, who will join the Super 7 World Series Pro Ranks the tournament play next season. But most of all, you have to hand it to Dynasty winning another NPPL title, man. And the boys from San Diego were honored in their hometown at the awards banquet, a first-class event and a fitting way to finish a spectacular season. That's going to do it from San Diego, folks. I'm Artie Edmonds on behalf of my buddy Rocky Cagnoni, Tony Johnson, and everybody at the NPPL and Pure Promotions organizations. We say thanks for watching. And remember, play safe, play fair, and play hard.
The world's premier paintball series, the NPPL Super 7, is now in its second season. The best of which is now available on DVD. Don't miss your chance to own the entire set, which you can purchase online or at finer retail paintball stores. See all the glory, all the upsets, and the best tournament play of all time on DVD Now.